In this video I talk to Casey Kuhlman and Dennis McKinnon of Project Douglas. They give me a demo of their DAO framer called Eris that they just released. So this is the uh, this is what the Eris interface when you first start it up uh, looks like. So when you first uh, start it up, uh, you will see that it uh, is it redirects you uh, to the top of what we call the swarm or the swarm forum. Um, up here in uh, is in up at the top is the uh, sort of the breadcrumbs of where your current location is at. So it's uh, this is telling you that you're at the very top because there's no nowhere to go up or down, um, and there's no topics or, or anything. So this is what it looks like when you first set up. The administrative actions are over here. Uh, later today, when you click this button, you will be able to change the dog that you're currently looking at to a different uh, set of dogs. Um, so if you want to uh, set a new topic, then you just go to new topic uh, and you set a, a new topic one. So, so the, the root the root address the the five five zero seventeen, which was also mm -hmm. in the, the URL of your Ares well Ares yeah. browser, how you call it? With just uh, yeah the client the Ares client is that the, is that the root address of your organization? Is that like your is that your organization itself? Um, right. So that is the that is the root address of the top of what we call the swarm. So. The root address of your uh, organization is really the dog address yeah. because we have set up all the contracts. They form a tree and the top, the very peak of that tree is the dog address. Yeah. And what what uh, Eris is doing behind the scenes is it goes up, it finds the 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 peak, that dog, and then it asks for the swarm when you when you just start it up and you go to localhost 5000, <clears throat> that is what it uh, will do by default. Um, so now I added a new topic, so we can go, um, does it see me scrolling through the screens or is it just only in the Chrome window that you see? Uh, it's uh, entirely static what I'm seeing right okay, now. Okay, cool. Um, so then after you add a new topic, then after that, you can go and you can add a new thread uh, to that topic. So when I clicked on uh, the F0532, um, that's one contract address. So here, the breadcrumbs uh, change and it shows you that you're in the uh, F0534 topic. Yep. Um, and you can go back to uh, the top of, of the post. So. Then, if you want to add a new new thread, uh, then you type this is a new thread. Then here you can see that you are in the new thread. Now, what is happening uh, behind the scenes? is that C3D is reading this uh, tree of contracts that is supposed that is being built as we do this. And it reads those um, it reads those and it uh, then builds the the forum based upon what is sitting in the the Ethereum contracts. Um, and then it builds the content of the forums based on what is sitting in the file blobs uh, that, it, that it reads from the cache. So when you click on that, then you actually get to a post. And so when you go to posts, um, then there's an additional upvote and downvote. Um, and then you can add more posts to whatever this, this thread is. So this is the first reply. Um, this is the second reply. Um, and so they go down like that. Um, we don't have, uh, right now, it's, it's not, it doesn't have like Reddit where you can 
respond, respond, and and have a and have a full thing like that, um, where w- with a tree that uh, has a um, uh, hundred different branches within one particular thread, we don't have that right now. Uh, but it's very easy to create new uh, new threads. So if we go back to the thread screen. Uh, one could create a new uh, thread and then add new posts. The reason that we do that is because uh, within the ARIS system, there are, uh, there are two types of groups. We have top-level groups and we have middle-level groups. Um, both of those are very flexible. Um, so middle-level groups can include other middle-level groups within their tree. Um, so basically, down the road, you'll be at, able to add threads to threads uh, because of how we are uh, designing it. So, and, so and before we go continue with this, so, mm-hmm. so, so Eris, it's a framework for building DAOs. Yeah. And this is a, a Reddit-style <laughs> implementation on top of that. So this is an example framework. No, an example application on top of the framework. Okay, all right, and that is the one that is shipped with the current uh, right. GitHub uh, repository. Yeah, but but just like this one, you could be building something else. You could be building a Facebook-like application or or anything like that. Yes, exactly. So, so we are seeing. So we you're using Ares the the framework, and we're looking at a specific example of how you could be using it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and so it's just kind of the easiest way to show uh, the screenshots uh, by by uh, by showing the yeah. the interface. And Eris is so it's offering a web interface which your everybody will be running locally, and it will be it's connecting to Ethereum. Yeah. Uh, and that's where the contracts come from, and that's also where the I guess the, the hierarchy comes from. So your your root address and, and connecting with Duck and then getting this 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 uh, thread like uh, structure. Mm-hmm. And it is using uh, another protocol to store the actual contents. So if you have this, this is this is the second reply. That part of text is that's not stored in Ethereum, is it? Right, that is not stored in Ethereum. That is stored in a file blob that sits in the cache on the on the hard drives of the subscribers to yeah. this this Doug, yeah. um, and then that's managed by Transmission, the the torrent client, and then C3D. So, so it's using BitTorrent to communicate this this actual content to to everybody. Right. So you have a. Uh, a magnet URL for per per thread, or is it, is it, or is a higher level per blob? Per so blob. it's per yeah. So it's per uh, blob of content. Like this, uh, this is a new thread. Uh, this is the first reply. Interesting. And and, and so, what is the role of C3D? What C3D does is it manages that cache, um, and so the and also it forms the relationships. Uh, well, sorry, Ethereum holds the relationships between the blobs. Yep. So the, the part of a, of a relational database that can, includes the relationship parts, uh, that's all held in Ethereum. Um, and then sort of the bigger, the, the blobs themselves or the content itself, that's just stored in files and then shared over the BitTorrent network. Um, and C3D is what connects those two pieces. Yep. But C2T only connects with the local Ethereum uh, client and the local BitTorrent client and, and uh, I guess, the, the Ares web interface. It, it doesn't connect to other C3T, C3D nodes. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Um, so the connection, and, the, and that's purposeful. That's by design. Yeah. So... The uh, so what we want is that there is a blockchain that connects with people, and then there is a distributed hash table, which is what the torrents use um, to, and that that connects people. Yeah. All the torrents do not use any trackers; they no. just use uh, DHT to find each other. Yeah. Right on. Okay, so uh, yeah, I have a better better overview of the of the architecture. Um, and these, I mean, these blobs, they're, they're very small, right? So there's just, uh, is, is, is the, is, the, are you, are you, um, is there still a torrent file being generated or is it just using the DHT and, and storing the content in the DHT directly? And by default, well, by default, what it does is it will create a blob for any, 
for these. Yeah, these will be very small, but we, we've created C3D so that it, uh, it should be um, very, it could be used for many different purposes. So it's, it's agnostic as to the file length and the, and the size of the file. Um, these are, are small, but uh, other uh, otherwise it, it should not be. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Sorry. it's not limited to that, right? So you, it could exactly. it could as well be a movie or a, or a screenshot or a file or a piece of sound or anything, anything, or yeah. even maybe a, a application release. Uh, some, right, some binary code could be anything. Could be there. Just uh, anything. It's, it's, it's just yeah. a blob. It's just a blob, exactly. And and so uh, down the road, uh, we we have to um, uh, make this a little bit easier. But the idea is that even the UI files, uh, which are eventually served to uh, any particular browser, that those will be uh, the pointers to those will be held within the Doug contract. So basically how it will be able to work in about, uh, in about a week is that um, as long as people have a Doug and, a, and an operating C3D client, then what will happen is they can just give a Doug address to the C3D client and C3D will be able to go and pull the UI files and then serve those to uh, any browser. Um, that, that we're still a little ways from that, yeah. um, that which is why we built this small Sinatra as an example yeah. uh, UI layer. Uh, but uh, but that's on our very very near uh, work radar. Yeah. So so you but you need this root this root address the um, the the five five zero seventeen. So how how would people how would people know that part? How would you how would you start this? Uh, how would you how would you distribute this? Give, giving your I guess this, in this in this context, it will be your discussion board, or something right. like that. Yeah. So so that's the that's one uh, route, and then um, this part is 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 actually what I'm going to work on just after we finish recording. Um, but but how it will work is people will have this address, yeah. uh, the five five zero one seven. They will be able to share that address, um, and then they will click here on my DAO. Um, now I'm not going to do it now because it's not; it's just going to redirect me to the current screen. But uh, it, this uh, my DAO button will uh, have a pop out, and uh, you can plug in any address into that, and it, then it will redirect you to that address. Yeah. Um, so that's that's actually the next thing I'm going to uh, work on just after we finish recording. And, and this you would share out of context, so using, <laughs> using... right? Yep. Or of so course, you share that on email or Twitter or wherever you want to share. Right, 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 right. Um, okay. And, and what are the what are the other things? So you, you 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 showed me that you can you can vote. You can vote up and down. Right. So you can vote up and down. Um, you also you see on all of these uh, buttons there's a flag this button, right uh, on the right, the yellow one. Yep. Um, so we have a a, a sequence here. Um, so what I did was I flagged uh, I flagged that uh, that piece of content um, and then it redirected me to uh, if you can see at the top one DC zero E nine seven. Yep. And so what we are in now is what we call the flag list. Now because because all of these blobs are being distributed uh, peer to peer. And because at this point, uh, for a forum, because because the because the Eris demonstration application is meant to be a forum, then it's meant to be quite public. So we we spent we spent a, a really kind of significant amount of time uh, on the back end system. I still need to clean up the UI a little bit on this, but on the back end system, we have a three step process for blacklisting content. Um, and when content is blacklisted, we do two things. Within the Ethereum layer, we uh, take the BitTorrent information hash, which is what the BitTorrent client needs to download the file. We mash that up. And so uh, that, that is uh, all mashed up when content gets onto the 
blacklist. The other thing is that when it gets onto a blacklist, then C3D knows to delete that content from people's hard drives. Yep. Um, and so that's for protection for, for the community. If, if somebody had posted uh, illegal content or infringing content, uh, then it can go through the blacklist process. And once it reaches that endpoint, then it can no longer be shared within the Ethereum layer. And anybody that already had that content, it gets uh, deleted from their hard drive. Um, now that's pretty onerous, and so we we set up a, a three-step process uh, to uh, to do that. The first step is to uh, flag uh, flag individual file blobs. Um, so when I press when I press the flag this button, that took me to the flag list, which is this one DCE uh, nine seven. Yep. Um, I need to change this button. This button that says flag this actually should be uh, promote this because the next uh, step is to actually now promote this, um, uh, this, this blob. And the promote is the second, um, uh, is the second uh, phase of filtering. And that requires a higher level of reputation uh, to promote something than uh, does uh, something uh, than it does to flag something, uh, and then the final step is to actually blacklist. So um, so anyway, I, it works on the back end. All the tests pass on that part, uh, but we don't. I haven't yet had a chance to finish up on the UI, so there's not actually much to show people right now. I hope by later today or tomorrow, people will be able to see that that flag list button will change to promote this and then they can promote a post and then finally blacklist the post. So, so, so there's an entire layer of identity management and I guess some kind of user management with this as well. I mean, you, you mentioned there are different, different, different levels of reputation. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not currently shown. Like is, right now it looks, it looks a bit anonymous. You don't know who posted the reply. Right. But how, how does that work? What, what kind of identity is associated with this or, or maybe how do you plan to expand on that? Yeah, we need to expand on that. Um, so to to add more meta information, um, it is it all exists within the Ethereum uh, layer, yeah. uh, but we just uh, need to pull it out uh, into the UI layer. So the C3D and the Ethereum layers are really what we have worked on most, and and so it all exists there. We just need to pull it in and and make it look better in the in the. Um, so already yeah. you have a you have a private address or a private key with a with a right. public address associated, um, and that is used to communicate to to Ethereum. And and if you post something, it will also be associated with that. Yep. And so that's how we track everything within the Ethereum contract. We use the Ethereum address of the person posting the topic or the 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 thread or or the post. And so it's all based on the Ethereum address that one was yep. was using when they interacted with the system. And then it's just a matter of having another, I guess, some kind of database. Just like you had the, I guess the the, the blacklist is also some kind of database. So you would also have some kind of. Um, metadata associated with this, this uh, well, with your identity, where you can have your name or anything like that. Yep, exactly. And and so, uh, yeah. So with identity, um, we still are working on the the membership, the sort of uh, uh, becoming on the in group. That that part of the stack um, is needs a little bit more work. Uh, to be honest, um, so but but that's that's definitely on our uh, very near radar is is to be able to have uh, out of the box have some different functions uh, that organizations can use to um, to control membership or access to the DAO. Um, at this point, uh, right now, it's it's very open by default, but hopefully by early next week or, or so, we will have a little bit more. Uh, uh, of an on-ramp for, for membership. Will this also be done through the, the ARES interface? It could be. I, I, that's what that's our hope, is because uh, is just have this ARES uh, interface basically have 
uh, it may be ugly, but to hopefully to have all of the core uh, functionality of C3D into this uh, UI. To be honest, we did the UI last. We we spend most of our time on the back end. Sure. So yeah. at this point, the the UI doesn't have that yet. But nope. that's that's on the. That's on the today list for Sure, that's for just a matter of pretty, you know, the, it's the, yeah. the, the core functionality. I mean, you're already using it. You're already, it's already, it's already there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and discuss, what's that? Sorry? Uh, I'm just going down the list of buttons. Oh, basically. okay. Discuss. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Discuss. That just takes you to uh, the top of uh, the, the discussion forum, basically. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, moderate moderate uh, takes you to the top of the flagged list. Yep. Um, and then it'll, uh, I'll, we'll add different buttons in here that will take you to the promote list and the blacklist. Yep. Um, uh, configure is, throws an error, so I'm not going to click on that, but that <laughs> would be to configure the client. Um, that's what I was working on just before the call. Um, now, voting, uh, yes, that doesn't return anything. Um, voting takes you to the list of issues. So the way that things work on uh, on a more happy side, we talked about the blacklist, sort of the ugly side, but on the happy side, um, the the idea is that discussions, so discussions are sort of in the middle of these five buttons on the right-hand side of the screen yeah. uh, for a reason, because we, we sort of see it as the core. Um, and so if you go one below, you get to the, the ugly stuff, the moderate stuff, mm -hmm. but one above is the vote stuff. And, and this is a, a this still ha has to be added into, um, the, uh, the, well, to be honest, we, we have to add this into the test, but we think it's working. Um, so the way that this works within the Ethereum layer is that, so people have discussions, um, after that then maybe they want to say, well, the community needs to make a formal decision on on this issue that we are discussing. So at that point, what can what will happen is that uh, uh, a, a discussion will will go up and people will say, yes, this is something that we need to uh, have a community decision on. And so then it will be raised for endorsement. Endorsement, just like we had a, a, a three-step process on uh, to get things into the blacklist, there's a two-step process. Well, actually, there's a three-step process to take community decisions. So, so this would be some kind of some kind of policy change or uh, changing the background color or whatever they want to decide on. Yeah, whatever the community needs to decide on. Um, it, it it's completely agnostic as to what the decision is. Yeah. Um, it could be small decisions or huge decisions. Yeah. Um, it, it, it all fun functionally, it all works the same way on yeah. the back end. Yeah. Um, so people have a discussion. Then uh, they say we need to take a community decision. So then at that point, it goes to the endorsement phase. And I'm sorry we don't have this to show people, but I can describe how it works on the back end. Um, once it goes to the endorsement phase, how we have it worked is that uh, to for an issue to be endorsed, there needs to be an aggregate level of reputation behind that uh, issue, or I mean behind that idea, and that that means that maybe a fewer people that have high level of reputation have backed it. Or it may mean that a lot of people with not a lot of reputation have backed it. Yep. Um, and, and all endorsement is really is just a filtering mechanism um, is, is because we don't want to make it, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not terribly efficient if, if every single thing that happens has to go to a vote. Uh, but that's just a number within the system, the aggregate level of reputation needed. So if people wanted to have a, a if people wanted to have every single decision go to a vote every single time, that's fine. They can do that uh, by lowering the aggregate reputation before they deploy the, the DAO. Because right now it, that is hard coded uh, into uh, the DAO infrastructure. Um, so down the road, we want to make that more of a variable within uh, Doug, which is the sort of core of the DAO. Uh, uh, around which all of these other contracts do things. 
So, um, in, that, so in that case, changing the rules of, of, of dark would also be exposed here. So, so changing it to like uh, the, the minimum level for uh, the minimum endorsement level would also be something that would be voted on by, by the members. And actually, the, if it passes, it would automatically change. Exactly. So you no, you no longer have a, have a supervisor or some kind of moderator or, or an admin that, that has to change this under the under the water, so to speak. But it would just be automatically implemented as soon as it passes the, the required thresholds. Right, and we're we are not yet to that point. So that will come in Doug version eight yep. when we have uh, when we have when Doug ha is able to store variables. Um, we already have. Uh, so there's. I'll get to it in one second, but we have three levels of voting, uh, or, or basically three levels of uh, how much quorum is needed, in, in quorum and consensus is needed to uh, to pass a change to the system, um, and that will be a very high change. Uh, so when you try to change things within Doug, uh, which is again, it's like the kernel of, of the DAO. When you try to change things in, DAO, in Doug, that will require a very, very high level of consensus. I, I think it's by default, I think it's like 80% of people that have been active within the last two months. So this would be something like changing the bylaws of your organization. Uh, com that's compared exactly to what that. it's doing. Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what it's doing. Yep. And then while the discussion is just having the, the informal chit chat and the mailing list and discussion that you have, and then if, I don't know, a, a, a vote could be distributing some funds to a cause or, 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 or changing the name of the, no, not changing the name, but uh, um, promoting it. this thing or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, the, so until now, there's, there, there's no financial connection. So could, could the, the DAO, does it also have a, like a, does it have a bank account? Is there some kind of funds being being stored? How is that? How is the monetary side of this working? We we have purposely stayed away from the monetary side. Um, we 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 really don't want this to be uh, so tied uh, to to money. Yeah. Um, you can plug money modules into this uh, very simply. Yeah. Um, on so one way to do that would be uh, to uh, to just have an issue. So everyone puts uh, money in maybe a, a a BTC account or a Litecoin account or a Dogecoin account or an Ethereum account. It doesn't doesn't really matter um, if if people contribute to this, and then we take a community vote on on where that money is going, or you put it into a thousand accounts, and then we take a community vote on on where that will go, um, and then we just do that sort of in a different layer of the stack. Um, down the road, we want to integrate the, these pieces a little bit uh, uh, a little bit tighter, but because uh, because number one, Ethereum is still in testnet and and number two, because, uh, uh, you know, we, we kind of want to have a little bit of a firewall between the discussion level and then sort of what the accountants of the organization might do. Um, at least at this point, we, we have not fully done that integration. Now, um, we're hoping uh, that, for example, uh, we could have maybe like, a, like an EtherX uh, plug in uh, or or connected uh, tissue between a, a DAO and then maybe an account that was perhaps sitting in EtherX, which if people don't know is is a is going to be a, a decentralized exchange, um, and and so perhaps that that could have a really tight linkage between those two systems, um, and you could use one for for more financial things, and and then yeah. one for more. Uh, but it would just be a plug-in, basically. I mean, it's not it's not right. part of the core system. I think that's a very interesting choice. I mean, coming from a Bitcoin world myself, my thirst. Well, thoughts for about Ethereum as well. This is all about financial contracts and options and futures and that kind of things. But it's it's well, this is really emphasis, emphasizing that you can do a lot of non-financial things on top of it. And of course, you can still connect the pieces together. But it's certainly not required that everything is a monetary uh, tool or a monetary contract. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, we we want to show some of the other aspects uh, by default. And yes, uh, of course, we understand that you know a big. I mean, finances and, and budgeting within an organization are, are, are definitely one of the things that people do discuss the most. And, and we definitely want to add those modules in. We just didn't build that as the first module. Yeah, I get it. 
So um, yeah, you you started this out to I don't know to 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 enter the bounty for for what was it replacing the Bitcoin Foundation in a programmatic way. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it turned out into something else. But uh, did, did you get any response from uh, Oliver Jensen that uh, issued the uh, the bounty? No, he's been quiet. Um, but I mean, the the bounty accelerated work that. Dennis and Preston and I had already been doing anyway, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, it, it, it made last month be uh, so that we did not get much sleep. But besides that, we were already going in this direction to begin with. Um, so Dennis and I had talked about making a, a, a forum system. Uh, for after one Dow Design Jam, we were discussing how we could actually do it. And that's how that's how Dennis and I uh, started working on C3D um, system and on sort of the current version of, of how Doug works uh, and makes the forums. And that's how we and that was all before that was maybe two weeks or three weeks before uh, the um, the bounty even came up. And so we had been working away quietly. When the bounty came up, then we just started working faster. <laughs> so that was that was about it. Can, can you tell something about the, the well, the, the coordination and cooperation between the three of you? Did you did you already know each other? I mean, are you physically present? Are you sitting in the same room? What's the? How did you get get well get together here? Well, I'm I'm here in the Netherlands. Um, Dennis is in uh, Canada, and Preston is in London. We found each other um, really just uh, hanging out uh, on the Ethereum Skype channels, to be honest. And, and I started asking Dennis some questions back uh, when he first uh, did uh, Denny's Lotto way back in the day. Uh, <laughs> I remember now. that one. <laughs> and uh, I was trying to figure out uh, I was trying to figure out sockets for for EPM, the Ethereum Package Manager. And, and he had uh, he had done some JavaScript, and so I had some questions on that, and I used his uh, his JavaScript example uh, to to sort of get me on the right path because I'm not really that uh, my JavaScript isn't very good. Um, I think I also asked you some questions that day, but anyway, uh, then then Dennis and I started chatting uh, back and forth. We've been uh, both participating in the DAO design jams that we've done. And, and so uh, we've just found each other that way and, and pressed in sort of similarly. Um, and, and, but we are, we're just, we found each other that way. And now we're just collaborating uh, from a distance. So it's mostly Skype and GitHub. Yeah, we use, uh, we use GitHub and, and Slack now. We've, we've, uh, we've moved over to, uh, to using a Slack room, uh, only because only because Skype on Ubuntu is always crashing. So I I don't um, I'm not uh, I don't know why that is, but in any event, uh, Slack is is ends up being much better, at least for me. So and from an Ethereum I guess perspective, you also had to develop quite a lot of things. I mean, uh, Dennis he was already working on Duck. You mm -hmm. had, you were working on EPM uh, already, mm -hmm. the, the the package manager. Yeah. Um, I think also C3D was also developed for this for this purpose. Yep. Uh, any, any other tools that 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 well came came out of this uh, collaboration? Those are the three big ones. Yeah. So um, I mean that Eris is really just a, <laughs> a a not really that pretty uh, UI that sits on top of those three. Um, so EPM is is what deploys all of the contracts, so everyone can. Um, then have their own Doug. It's just uh, sitting there for them and their own forum all set up. Uh, then, uh, then C3D is, is what connects the file blobs to the sort of relationships that are held within the Ethereum layer. And then the Doug piece really is, is, the, is the core of a DAO um, with now some, uh, the first module added to it, uh, which is the, the forum system. What is the the li is this open source? What is the license for this? Um, so we, it's all licensed uh, for for software usage purposes. It's basically uh, an MIT license. Now it's a modified MIT in the sense that we have added a legal disclaimer uh, onto that for uh, because these. Uh, 
because Ethereum is uh, called contracts, we, we have to make uh, make it clear that uh, these aren't contracts as one would uh, normally understand that word within the jurisdiction where it is being used. Um, so not to get too lawyerly on people, but uh, there are there are concerns that uh, doing smart contracts may lead to uh, some questions by uh, legal associations and bar associations as to unauthorized practice of law. So the, the, the change to the normal MIT that exists on our license is really to uh, try to say uh, this is not legal and to disclaim all of the uh, stuff on, on the provision of legal services uh, part of this is a contract. So, so, that's, so, that's, a, so that's another interesting spin-off from this uh, that, that other developers can uh, should consider using. Um, at least we had two lawyers look at it. So both both Casey and you, uh, so both Casey and, and Preston, I think you're both... Uh, We're both lawyers, yeah. Yeah, and you want to uh, well, you want to keep you want to keep that. You don't want to uh, get into trouble with your... Uh, yeah, and we don't want other people that are trying to do open source uh, uh, smart smart contracts to get in trouble either. Because at the end of the day, this is just a a, a piece of software, and it's meant to uh, work on the blockchain. It's it's not meant to be a contract as one particular jurisdiction on earth might uh, might interpret it. So, so you already mentioned a couple of things that you'll be working on next after this call. So, of course, mm -hmm. uh, polishing up the user interface a bit, integrating the the, the user management, um, mm -hmm. some stuff like that. What what do you what do you need? What are you looking for? What are what is missing in your in your team or in your toolkit? Um, right now, we're we're uh, super excited that when we open it up and we're starting to uh, get get questions and bug reports in. Um, especially sort of on the setup path and the getting started path. We want to make that as, uh, as easy as possible for people. And so really what we're asking for is, is first off people to use it and test it and, and, and let us know where the pain points are so we can try our best to, uh, to smooth those out because uh, it's hard when you're developing it on your own. Uh, I mean, on your computer, because, you, you change a, a setting and you know that it's there and you don't, you know, then maybe other people don't know to change a particular setting or something like that. Um, so it's, it's great that we're starting to uh, get those uh, questions and uh, bug reports in so we can start to fix some of the on-ramping. Um, then uh, that's one thing. And then the other thing, though, really is um, start building on it, you know, start building different modules that make sense for your organization um you know the the easiest way to start is to take a look at the different bylaws that uh, that we use and so bylaws within the bylaws exist within two layers they exist within the c3d layer or and then within the ethereum layer um and we think that those can provide a interesting baseline for somebody for example if they want to set up a different way of voting or if they wanted to uh, examine different actions and interactions in different ways, they could build a new bylaw and and add that to the list of, of possible bylaws um, within first the Ethereum layer, yep. uh, and then within the C3D layer, all it is uh, within the C3D layer is you set up some uh, a transaction format, you know, uh, this blob at this, you know, particular slot and that's really all you have to do uh, to to add new functionality and and so that's 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 what we'd really like right now can you show me the the project website uh, I mean you're sharing your screen so I can okay. so the 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 website for Eris is at eris.projectdouglas.org and this is the entire I guess white paper it used to be uh, we've we've uh, we've slimmed it down a little bit, uh, so so it should not be uh, so long. It should be a little bit more uh, concise now. Yeah. Uh, we even have a video on there. If people want the 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 full proposal, uh, they can go to pages um, and then uh, where is it bounty submission? So that was the first thing we did. 
it was it was uh, interesting because we wrote that for a very specific purpose of 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 responding to that that bounty. Um, we did not we did not write for a general audience, and and so uh, we just put that on this eris.projectdouglas.org, and it ended up confusing a lot of people. Um, I think maybe a few more. A few more <laughs> Pretty much everybody, I think. <laughs> yeah, we we never really intended the. No, sure. I mean, it was the first. Yep. Be the description yep. of of Eris, but so so yesterday we we worked on changing that, and so now the Eris site should actually tell people about Eris, and and I hope that it's a little bit more clear now. And if you scroll down to the button, there's also a link to the to the GitHub project. Um, yes, there is, um, and then also. Uh, people can link from. Oh no, that's not right. Sorry. In the middle is all the information. I'm intrigued. Where can I find more information? It's all in here. There's the repositories on GitHub. Yeah. It's also at the bottom. So if they uh, want to get started with this, they will check that out mm -hmm. and, and follow the instructions. They need to install the, the Ethereum clients. They need to install the transmissions daemon. They need mm -hmm. to have a minimum. I think a minimum Ruby setup. Of of two point oh, yeah. uh, it may work on one point nine, but I haven't tested it yet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And, and if people are on OSX, that Ruby should be pre-installed, but on Linux they would have to install for MapKit. A anything I forgot to ask about you guys? Maybe Dennis, you've been uh, pretty quiet. Yeah. Sorry. Casey's been doing pretty good. Um, there's a couple things that I'd like to add. Is first things like. The particulars of the Ethereum layer and Doug, um, like the three steps for blacklisting and the two steps for endorsements, those are all uh, completely uh, modifiable in Doug because Doug is, of course, designed to be modular and adaptive. So none of that is uh, a constraint on C3D. Um, it's something that you can... Uh, it's functionality of C3D that you can exploit in Doug and vice versa. Yeah. So I think that's a major point. And um, you asked about uh, future things that we want to do. So um, I initially got excited about uh, the possibility of using Swarm with blockchain after reading the slides of Gavin's uh, uh, Gavin's uh, presentation. I don't remember where it was. I think it was in London. Yeah, it was in London. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I thought that was really cool, and I thought, well, why don't we just do this? And that's sort of why I got in touch with Casey, because we had talked about something somewhat similar. So I was like, hey, let's just do this. Um, and in that presentation, there was a third part to his idea for the third generation of web, which was Whisper. And Whisper is a protocol that we haven't implemented yet but it's something that i would like to so this uh, would be more like some kind of i think some kind of re real-time peer-to-peer communication layer if i remember correctly yeah, yeah and, it's, Go ahead. and it has a lot of uh, a lot of very useful functionality that you might not immediately think like chat program yes of course uh but also like key distribution would probably be a whisper type <laughs> system yeah so uh that leads to um, we would like to be able to incorporate encryption and uh, levels of privacy that are automatically uh, managed but uh, not exploitable. So nobody has control over it except for you. So that would be a nice next, next step that we're currently working on. Also, if we really want to like change the Internet, if we can solve or get somebody to help us solve um, uh, proof of custody slash proof of bandwidth so that you have an incentivized network of content hosting, uh, then there's not really anything that we shouldn't be able to host off the C3D system. I mean, like a form is rather low, low bandwidth requirements. So you could pretty much just say that people aren't going to mind about sending a two kilobyte file when their browser already does that so many times a day that they don't even notice. So, yeah. Yeah. But if you wanted to do something like uh, YouTube, uh, you're going to need 
people who are incentivized to host video content, which is uh, not a non-trivial um, cost on their end. Right, or a Spotify. And, um, well, and then, of course, we want to clean up the code. Um, I'm trying to take Doug in a more object-oriented direction so that it's uh, easier for people to understand how it works. Um, and there's something else. Encryption. I mean, on, on my side, on the C3D side, um, if anyone has any good ideas of how we can uh, encrypt these file blobs most efficiently, uh, I, w I would love to be able to do that with the Ethereum keys. Um, that may or may not be possible. To be honest, I haven't had time to really... So that way you could do private messaging or you could yep. have some kind of moderated subgroup yep yeah yep and and also like when we when we take this forum to the next sort of the next level of the forum is is uh is a facebook like system um in in that to be able to do that we would we would really need to be able to nail privacy and encryption of the file blobs so if anyone has any good ideas on that please uh get in touch fork help us out we'd love it and how did they get in, in touch with you? What's the best way to reach uh, the team? Um, either through uh, the main project, Douglas.org website. It has all of uh, our coordinates at the bottom. Or the GitHub site, um, uh, github.com uh, slash project dash Douglas. Uh, file an issue and, and we'll get on it. Or our emails are also on uh, projectdouglas.org at the bottom. Okay. Uh Casey and Dennis, thank you very much.